The story begins with a girl who comes to work as a nanny in a house. The nanny's job is to take care of the children in that house. The girl enters the house but doesn't see anyone. She calls her mother and tells her that she will stay there tonight. During the call, she hears a strange sound coming from the basement and decides to follow it. She is shocked when she sees a woman sitting there eating a child. The woman gives her a strange look. And when the girl tries to run away, the woman's husband shuts the door. The woman then kills the girl, and we see a strange mark on the basement door, which will be explained later in the story. Years later, the story shifts to the present day, where we see a 17-year-old boy named Ben, whose parents are separated. Ben's father works at a port, so he takes Ben with him to work. Near Ben's father's house, another family has come for a holiday. This family consists of a couple and their two sons. Ben asks his father about this family, and he says that they might be staying nearby for a few days. Ben gets into an argument with some boys, and while he's talking to them, a girl named Mallory approaches him. She is also working there. Then the scene shifts to a forest where a woman named Abby is walking with her son. It turns out that this is Abby's family, the one staying near Ben's father's house. As they are walking in the forest, Abby's son gets lost and hears what seems to be his mother calling him. He becomes frightened, but then sees a mark on a tree, the same mark we saw on the basement door earlier. Abby's son takes a picture of the mark and sees something strange in the tunnel, like a hand calling him. Just then, Abby comes and takes him with her. On the way, their car hits a deer and it dies. Abby takes the deer home, and when her husband asks why she brought it, she says they can use its meat and she will butcher it herself so their children will know where meat comes from in the city. But when she tries to cut the deer with a knife, she fails and gets herself and her son dirty, so she leaves. We then see something strange coming out of the deer. Ben wakes up at home and feels like someone is walking on the roof. He goes outside and finds a hole outside Abby's house that looks like it was made by an animal. Abby's husband also wakes up and asks Ben what happened. He tells Ben not to worry and to go back to sleep, saying it must have been an animal. Meanwhile, we see something strange behind Ben, watching him. The next morning, Abby's son is standing near the hole Ben saw the night before. As Ben is leaving, he tells the boy to move aside, thinking there might be an animal hiding there. Later that day, Abby comes outside holding her younger son and sees that the flowers around their house have wilted, as if someone is watching them from the basement. Ben meets Abby's son by the sea in the afternoon, finding him asleep in a boat. Ben wakes him up and asks what he's doing there. The boy says he's waiting for his father to take him out on the boat, so Ben asks him to tell him if he notices anything strange around their house, because Ben was scared the night before. Ben's father likes a girl he wants Ben to meet, but Ben doesn't want to because he believes his parents are separating because of him. So, without telling his father, Ben goes to a party with Mallory and her friends. He drinks a lot and enjoys himself, but Mallory's friends mistreat him, making him angry. That night, the monitor screen at Abby's house shows her younger son sleeping in the carriage, surrounded by something strange with glowing eyes. Suddenly, Abby's son's toy falls, waking Abby. She goes to her son's room and is shocked to find that her child is not in the carriage, but only wood pieces are there. Then, two hands emerge from below and drag Abby away. Ben is returning home at night and sees Abby holding her child. But before he can stop her, his father arrives and scolds him because he had planned dinner with the girl he likes. Ben tells him he doesn't care. The next morning, Abby is shown behaving strangely, but her husband and children don't suspect anything. Her husband has to go out for work, and Abby's elder son comes into her room and sees his mother in a strange condition without clothes, which scares him. Ben returns home at night to find his door open and Abby's son also there. The boy, suppressing his fear, tells Ben, I don't want to go home, and asks him not to let her in. He is actually talking about Abby. Abby comes to Ben's house looking for her son, but Ben lies that the boy isn't there, suspecting that Abby might have hurt him. Abby forcibly enters Ben's house because she knows her son is inside. Her husband arrives too, and Ben now suspects something is wrong with their family. He starts spying on them, but doesn't notice anything unusual. 
Abby is in a room with her husband, and we see strange marks on her body and hear a cracking sound in her bones, making it seem like someone or something has taken control of her body. Or maybe she isn't Abby anymore. The next day, Ben waits by the sea for Abby's son to find out what's happening in their house, but the boy doesn't come. Ben decides to find out on his own, so he goes to their house. He asks Abby's husband about their son, but surprisingly, the husband doesn't seem to remember having a son. It's like he has forgotten everything, and this puzzles Ben. When he returns home, he sees the strange mark. The story reveals that there is a terrifying witch living in the roots of the trees in the forest who can wear human bodies like clothes, meaning she can inhabit a human body. The person will remain the same, but the witch will be inside. She has powers that allow her to control human minds and suck the blood of children whose parents have forgotten them. First, she takes control of the parents and then takes their children. The witch has taken control of Abby's husband's mind and Abby is already dead. The witch who took over her body is wearing Abby's skin and has eaten Abby's children. Ben is shocked by this and realizes he can't tell the police because who would believe him? So, he calls his friend Mallory and tells her everything, saying their neighbors are strange and their children are missing, but they don't seem to care. Meanwhile, they see that the witch, pretending to be Abby, is hiding something in the basement. Mallory writes a note in jest saying, we know what you're hiding in the basement, and she draws the mark too. She throws the note at Abby's house, and Abby's husband picks it up. And after reading it, when he looks at the basement, Abby stops him and whispers something in his ear, causing blood to start dripping from his ear. After that, he loses consciousness and looks like a half-dead, half-alive person. Abby's skin also begins to peel off, revealing that she is a demonic witch, but the skin was Abby's. Ben's goal was only to spy on them. He was sure that something was wrong. One day, he sees Abby leaving the basement after getting ready, and he immediately breaks the lock and enters. The scene inside is strange. Some wooden structures have been assembled, and there is an animal skull. It looks like black magic was performed there. He finds some pictures of Abby's family with crosses marked on their faces. There are also pictures of Mallory and Ben's family. Seeing this, Ben immediately tries to inform Mallory because the witch's next target was her family, particularly her younger sister, whose blood the witch wanted to drain. Ben goes to save her, but it's too late the witch has already taken Mallory into her lair. Ben grabs her hand as she cries for help. He tries hard to save her, but as he pulls her out, he slips, hits his head on a rock, and loses consciousness. When Ben regains consciousness, it is already evening, and he returns home to find the police waiting for him. Abby had filed a report against him for spying on her house, but her servant had handled everything. Ben says, Father, please believe me, but soon Ben realizes that the demonic witch is now inside that woman because the flowers near where she stood had wilted. In the meantime, the demonic witch attacks Ben. Ben also attacks her with a knife, but just then his father arrives, scolds him severely, and calls the police who arrest him. Ben tries to explain to his father that the woman is possessed by a demonic witch, but he doesn't listen. The police also arrest him, and instead of taking him to the police station, the officer drives him to the seashore. Blood is oozing from the officer's leg because the demonic witch had also taken control of him. The officer takes Ben to the shore, intending to drown him, but just then, a dog arrives. Ben had often fed this dog, and it had come to help him, but the officer kills it too. Just as he is about to finish Ben off, something happens to him, and he ends up killing himself instead. Ben's father, now worried about his son, goes to the police station and wants to meet him on the way, but the woman inside prevents him from leaving. He somehow escapes and checks Abby's basement. There he finds that Abby's husband is dead, and Abby's body is hollow, meaning the demon had already used her body. The sight sends chills down Ben's father's spine, and he is terrified. The demonic witch comes from behind, attempting to strangle Ben's father to death, but Ben arrives from behind and shoots the woman, fleeing with his father. The demonic witch also reveals her true form, but needs a body in the real world, so she flees into the forest. The basement was set on fire and the marked pictures were burned. Mallory was also with him. Ben went into the tunnel, where there was a web of roots. 
He told Mallory that if he didn't return in 10 minutes, she should set the place on fire. Ben now goes inside the tunnel, where he first finds his brother and then Mallory's sister. The demonic witch attacks him while he is saving them, but somehow Ben manages to get them out. After that, Mallory and Ben set the place on fire. Mallory looks back at the place as they leave. Ben was also ready to leave for home. He meets Mallory one last time and she gives him a flower. Ben was driving with his parents when he noticed that the flower was fake, meaning that the demonic witch was now inside Mallory as the real flowers wilted when she approached. There were some children with Mallory on the boat and at the end, Mallory had a creepy smile on her face. Will the wicked witch kill the children once she possesses Mallory? No one knows.